obviously going back to your story at, at this time things weren't necessarily getting much better for you at all actually because you you had a lump in your throat or you found a lump in your throat so maybe you can kind of take us back to that day um you know what what actually happened and then what what happened afterwards as well sure when when i was first um so there's two rounds of college in boston the first time i went away i was at northeastern and that's when i really started to drink heavily and enjoy more of the party going out life i ended up going through the first trimester and i almost almost finished the first trimester but it was the first time in my life that i wasn't getting straight a's i was doing really poorly because i wasn't doing any of the work i wasn't going to the classes uh so i ended up dropping out and that's when i went back to my family's um home in connecticut and that already felt like a failure that to me was like a big, you screwed up big time here, Sari. This is really not great. And at that time was when I had this lump in my neck since, uh, since I was in high school, but it just got bigger and bigger and bigger until finally it was, uh, my mom urged me to go to get it checked out. Um, it was after I went to one of the annual checkups and she urged me to go get it checked out and I did. And in that moment, the pediatrician called up to Yale New Haven Hospital and got me an appointment to get a CAT scan and, uh, and later a biopsy. But it was to get it checked out. And I'm like, okay, what, what's going on here? And she's like, you just need to go there right away. And I'm like, you want to tell me anything? And of course, as doctors, they can't tell you anything because it's liability here in the U.S. So that's when I found out what this lump was. And it was being diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma two weeks later Mm -hmm. that at 19 is you know first it's dropping out of high of college then you're diagnosed with cancer so it's like a double punch of what is going on and your whole life flips upside down in that moment because things that you thought were important like you know when am I going back to school how's my boyfriend all of a sudden things like that don't matter what still did matter was an eating disorder And it's a really screwed up mentality to have an addiction like such, because even though my health should have been the number one concern, it was still maintaining my, um, my issues with food and how I was going to handle that. So that was being diagnosed and that kind of leads into where I was after. Hmm. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, it's just, what, what was it like? Like, I mean, was there a bit of time between the tests and the diagnosis? What was the time period like and what was the weight like? You know, it's one of the worst things ever to wait between getting an exam like that and getting the results. Um, it's like the biggest limbo that you don't know. You can't sleep. You don't function 100% because you are in constantly this what if. And I knew nothing about yoga, I knew nothing about breathing, I knew nothing about mm. mental health back then, it was just a survival mode. So you have anxiety and you're struggling with it on top of having a triple dose of anxiety because you don't know what the hell is your life's gonna be like in yes. you know, however long. So it's a, lot of, uh, it's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of anxiety and uh, you don't know what your health is going to be like. So it's all the basic pillars of humanity that creates us as human beings to be okay. It's just like, we're just going to pull all these out from you. It's like slow thing. Wow, Sarah. And and, I mean, it's just, it's hard to comprehend how you must feel in that, in that time. Did you have a feeling of like impending doom or did you kind of feel like this is not good or or, or were you like, oh, it's probably nothing kind of, what, what kind of mentality did you have in that period? Great question. I think I wanted to believe that everything was fine. And that's probably what I tried to portray on the outside. Deep down, I knew something was wrong. I think, Mm. uh, you know, if it's your body, you know, in your body, something's not right. How I always tried to portray to the outside world is that everything is fine. And that's Mm. part of what I developed with an eating disorders. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm okay. But it's deep down stuff isn't okay. So you start to once again, develop that distance between mind and body even further. Wow. So, so you had that, you had that uh, lump on your neck for a long time then? 
It grew. Yeah. It, be- it started as a bean. We called it a bean in high school because someone was giving me a neck massage and it was like, what the heck is this? And I was like, I don't know. Let's just call it a bean. It's, um, it's, it was in my neck as part of the lymphatic system. But then it started to grow more and more to the point it was almost the size of a golf ball. So it was oh, really wow. not normal. Um, that was in my neck. So it metastasizes. And when cancer cells double, I mean, it's like compounded interest. It doubles mm. and doubles fast. Where was it, Sarah? Like just on the side or down at the bottom? Um, yeah, it's if you go down the scalenes in the neck, which is one of the neck muscles, so it's right above the collarbone. Yeah. Um, that also ties up to just under the ear. So there's a line uh, that goes from down the side of the neck. Uh, hmm. Those are all your lymph nodes, one of the main parts of the lymph nodes in your body. They run all throughout your body, but that's one of the main ones. Wow. And you ended up, uh, actually going through 10 months of chemo and radiation and goodness, it just uh, must have been so tough. But what was your experience of that like during that period? I, um, when most kids in college were thinking about what party they were going to, I was wondering, am I getting chemo next week? So it really put me in the weird category for sure. Mm. Uh, the chemotherapy, I I hated, I hated, I was fearful every day about if my hair was going to fall out. Mm. As a female, you really identify, and even males, and you identify with how you look. If you're already self-conscious about how you look and you don't like how your body is, and then, oh yeah, we're going to make your hair fall out. It doubles the, I really don't like myself. Um, And even when people were like, oh, you have a cute, you have a great shape of a head. And it's like, that doesn't make me feel Mm. any better. (laughs) Wow. So I, but I fought and I fought for a long time and there were ups and there was many downs, but um, especially I was in the PD section, which was a blessing because you're around a higher energy than when Mm. I, I briefly was in the adult oncology. The adult oncology is really, at least when I was there 16 years ago, it's a really depressing feeling. You're just in these rows. It's like a cattle call and you just get plugged into your IVs. Um, I'm sure they've come a long way now, but it's still, it's not a pleasant experience. Um, For kids in PD, at least it was... I hate clowns. They had clowns. Um, They had dogs sometimes. Do you have like people who are a little bit higher energy and uplifting? Mm. It was sad, of course, seeing babies going through chemotherapy because like I did dumb things in my life. Okay. So I get it. I haven't helped this situation, but that little kid was born into it. So there was also that heartbreak feeling, but at the same time, I took it as a responsibility for myself to stay upbeat, to stay strong. And I think that was an underlying blessing when you're going through something like chemotherapy and, and fighting any kind of disease like that, you have to develop an inner strength and an inner resilience to keep propelling yourself strong and forward. And Mm -hmm. that same thought process that wants to put you down, you just have to keep overriding it. And like, I'm rebuilding myself. I still struggled with the eating disorder. So it was, you know, really a, uh, a split, a bipolar mentality mm. that I wanted this health, yet I wasn't doing the, st- the steps to create that health. But then at the same time, you had the mental strength to kind of still be positive. It's really this weird mm. mix, isn't it? The mind has a really powerful capability. My mind has always been, I mean, all of our minds are super strong. The mind can override anything else within the body in our human capacity. Um, but at my mind really just overrode everything. And it was like, what do I want? How do I want to be? And coming back to that idea that I was, I can be, and I was a chameleon. So the face that I was there was very different than the face I was when I was by myself. Mm. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change Snowy Cape Fold Mountain Range Gotta be quick so 